Hi, welcome back to the workshop for the continuation of the Firebird build. And the first stage in that is to get the lacquer that's been curing for the last four weeks all nicely polished up. Okay, so just to get everyone caught back up with where we are on this project, this was sprayed about four weeks ago and it's been hung up curing in all that time. And if I try and kind of get a fingernail into the finish in a hidden area, I can feel that it is very hard and it has cured properly. So now it comes time to get this flatted down and polished up to the finish that we want. Now this is replicating kind of a vintage style Firebird. So I don't think I'm gonna go for a kind of super, super duper high gloss finish on it as if it had just come out of the factory, but I do want it to be shiny. So what I'm going to do, and I've done this before on other builds is I've got some super acylix paper. Well, it's not really paper, it's more of a fabric. If you haven't tried this stuff, I can't recommend it highly enough. It's absolutely brilliant. And what I've got is I've got some 600, which I've got on my block. I've got some 800 and I've got some 1200. I'm going to give it a good rub down and a flat out with that. And then once that's done, I've got some 3000 and 6000 grade Trizac pads from 3M. I'm not actually gonna use these two. These are some that I used on another job and probably need going in the bin now. And I think that should get me to where I want to be with this finish. If not, I could always hit it with a polishing compound of some type. So all I'm gonna do to start with is I'm gonna take the 600 on this block and just give it a quick rub down. And you can see there is a little bit of texture in this, but mostly that's smoothed down with just that little bit of rubbing. Those of you who've been following this might remember that I actually built a spray booth and had an extractor for the first time while I was spraying this. So there's hardly any overspray. And while it didn't leave a, like a really glossy finish, it wasn't kind of very orange peely or anything. So it is rubbing down quite easily. And I'm basically, I'm just gonna do that until Everything's down to a, a nice flat finish with the 600 and then I'll step up through the 800 and then the 1200 just to get any imperfections out and then we can hit it with the Trizac pads and see how we go from there. Okay, so I've been over most of this now with the 600 grit on the block. And you might be able to see here that it's kind of flatted down most of it, but there's still some little uneven patches there, you can see, which are kind of like shown up as kind of shiny spots in this more milky area where we've rubbed down. Now, I don't really want to rub this down on the block until I get rid of all of that, because the chances I might take one of these edges off. You've got to be very, very careful on your edges. So what I've got is, I've got the bit of 600 now, just on the soft foam pad, and I'm just gently, gently, I'm gonna go around here, trying to kind of keep it away from the edge, as much as I can, and just taking that down. until all those little low spots are gone. They're nearly gone, like that. Now there's still a few little ones in there. You probably can't see them in the camera, but I can when I catch it in the light. But I'm gonna leave them in, and I'm gonna get them with the next pass with the 800 paper. And I think the best way I can explain that is using something that we haven't had for a little while, and that's a, another dodgy diagram. 
because what we're trying to achieve here is actually a two-step process. Um, it's always referred to as polishing, but I think more technically you could refer to it as flatting and polishing. And what I mean by flatting is simply kind of getting a flat surface, which we can then polish into the finish that we want. And to explain that, if we take that line to be the wood of the guitar, what happens when we spray it, unless you've got a very good spray booth and some really nice equipment and somebody who can use the gun a lot better than I can, is you will get a somewhat uneven finish. And if we blew it up under a microscope, that is what that orange peel effect will look like. So what I'm trying to achieve with the flatting process is if we draw a line along all those low points, but at this stage, I'm actually coming just a little bit above the low points. So there are some little imperfections still, like there and there, but the bulk of it is relatively flat. Now, theoretically, what you'd want to do is flatten it right the way down so there's no imperfections left at all. And in some circumstances, you can do that. I prefer not to on these builds because that is when you get very close to the wood and you start burning through your finish and you're having to touch up and do refinishing work, which we want to avoid if we possibly can. You got to bear in mind as well, this is a massive exaggeration. We are talking a finished film that is microns thick. So what I always like to do is kind of get it flat to a point where I'm comfortable that I can get the rest of the little imperfections out by hand sanding with the little soft foam pad that you saw me using, not on a hard pad. It will mean that potentially what we'll do is we will end up with a finish that kind of dips ever so slightly into those imperfections. It is very, very close to a perfectly flat, smooth finish. And once you get a polish on it, it will appear to be absolutely glassy smooth. So that's my initial flattening. And once I've got to the point with the 600 pad where I'm down and all the minor imperfections have gone, from there, we then work our way through the finer papers. And all that is doing at this point, it's removing the scratches from the grader paper before it. I'm gonna work my way, as I said, through three grades of acylics, and then I'll be onto the Trizac pads, which are 3,000 and 6,000 grit. And from there, hopefully, we should have a very, very nicely polished up finish. Okay, so that's everything now rubbed down to 1200 grit. Um, it's all feeling lovely and smooth and beautiful. Obviously, as I go around this, I will pick up bits that need a little bit of rework just to get some of the scratches out, but hopefully that won't be too much. So with that done, I can now move on to the Trizac pads and I'm gonna use, like I said before, 3000 and 6000 Trizac pads. Uh, very, very fine grit abrasives. And they come on these like little sponges they're designed to go onto an orbital sander, but you can use them by hand. I found no problem whatsoever doing that. I am gonna put just a dab of water, not very much, but it does work better with a little bit of water. And just start using small circular motions to polish this up. Now I'm trying to keep away from the edges a little bit. They're always the problem areas. And as I said before, all I'm doing here is taking out the scratches from the 1200 paper. And because the 1200 paper is so fine, it doesn't actually take that long to do. So I'll just dry that off, see what it looks like. And that all looks very even. So I'll give it a little bit more water and give it a go with the 6000 pad. Okay, and hopefully you'll be able to see there's quite a nice level of shine on that already. So yeah, very happy with that. It's difficult to get it in the shot from this angle, but we'll have a look at a much better angle later on. So I'm gonna carry on now with the rest of this. Probably won't bore you with it on camera, and I'll join you back once we've got the bulk of this done.
Okay, and hopefully you can see there, there's the fully polished up body. I'm actually really pleased with the way that that's come out. It has taken on a really, really nice shine. It isn't the kind of glossy mirror smooth finish that I'd get if I was to use my power mop on it. Um, but that really wasn't what I was, I was looking for on this one. I wanted something that kind of had a bit of character to it. Something that looked like it had got a bit of age. So anyone with a guitar that's finished in nitrocellulose that's more than say four or five years old will understand what I'm saying by that kind of less glossy sheen that they have to them. And I think if that was what I was aiming for, I've kind of got very, very close to that. So I'm really, really happy with how it's looking. The wood looks beautiful underneath this glossy finish. I'll try and get some more close-up shots of that in a second. The other thing that I was a little bit worried about, but I'm not anymore, is the little bit of damage that was on the back of the neck. And as you can see there, they're visible. I haven't tried to hide them, I've filled them, but they don't look too horrendous. And I think these neck laminations look really, really nice with a bit of lacquer on them. I'm very, very happy with the way that they've come out. I think the way that the mahogany and the sapili and the walnut kind of work against each other looks really, really nice. And I'm also very happy with this volute. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. So all in all, I think that's a successful outcome with the polishing. Looks absolutely lush. So all in all, very, very happy with the way that that's come out. Really pleased with it. So that's that step done. So not many steps to go before we can start putting this thing together. But the biggest one of those is that I need to do something about these frets because obviously they've just been hammered in at this point. So they need to be leveled, dressed, polished, cleaned up, all the fret ends, beautified, etc. But I'm going to leave that till next time. I'm going to leave this episode here. So as always, smash that like button if you've enjoyed this. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I'll look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.